This is a question that I often get, and it's how many calories should you eat to lose fat? And we need to get this right once and for all. Too many times I see clients bouncing around with their calories where they think that they might need more, and then there's times when they don't eat enough, and then what ends up happening is they either stuff or they starve, leaving them to fall off completely from their tracking, their goals, and ultimately falling completely off the scale. And so today's video, I'm gonna to put together the five ways that you're gonna be able to figure out how many calories you should be eating so that you can eat to lose the fat. Now, the first thing I wanna tell you is that you need to pick a goal and you need to stick to it. So don't be flip-flopping between wanting to lose fat and wanting to put on muscle. I see this a lot when it comes to belly burn challenges where people will say to me, well, you know what, I think I'm done losing weight and now I wanna focus on muscle. But the problem is you can't flip-flop. So if you've been in a constant weight loss journey and you're dropping your fat, I would tell you to continue to drop your fat and focus less on your weight until you get to around 20%. So for females, I like that 20 to 25% range. If you can get in that 15 to 20%, that's when you're gonna really see the muscle definition into the stomach. For males, I'd like to see between 10 and 15% would be your ultimate goal. It's not the goal that you might hit next month. It might not be the goal that you hit in the next six months. It might not be the goal that you hit in a full year. This might take you two to three years to get to that low body fat percentage. But until we get to that number, we need to continue to focus and stay on the goal that we originally picked. Because muscle takes a whole different approach. And I'm not saying it's not a good approach, but it's approach that needs to be consistent. So if your goal is to actually drop the weight and you lose the weight, then your next goal should be to continue down that train and focus on dropping body fat. Once again, those numbers for females are anywhere from 20 to 25 is the good range where you're gonna see some real muscle definition. But if you can get below 20, that's where we wanna be. For males, we wanna be between 10 and 15 and that's where you're gonna be ultimately shredded. So stick to the goal that you picked. The second thing to figure out how many calories you should be eating to burn fat is that you need to find how many calories that you're burning in a day. Now I have a method that I personally use on each one of my clients, but a simple method for you is to look at your smartwatch and determine how many calories you're actually burning in a day. So if you find out that you're burning 2,500 calories in a day, then if you put yourself in a 500 daily caloric deficit, then over time, again, it requires consistency. So if you're actually tracking your food and if you're consistently burning 2,500 calories a day, then you can set your MyFitnessPal for 2,000 calories and then give it about eight weeks and you should be hitting that pound a week weight loss that you're looking for. Now here's the thing, a lot of us, we either cheap out and buy these no-name watches from Amazon or we don't upgrade our watches enough where the sensors aren't working properly. And unfortunately, these watches do clunk out. I recently had mine clunked out. I upgraded to this brand new Samsung watch and the amount of calories that I'm burning then versus now are completely different. And I thought these watches would last forever, but they don't. They may still work, but the sensors stop working or they have upgraded technology. So that's one of the things that you might consider as your next gift is to get your watch upgraded. I'd say about three years is where they start to clunk out. The third is that your initial hunger versus what your body actually needs might not be the best indicator. So what do I mean by that? If you're just getting off a massive food bender because you're starting a diet or a belly burn on Monday, then if I drop your calories from the five to 6,000 calories that you ate Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and drop you down to 1,500 calories, you're instantly going to be hungry because your stomach has grown and expanded over the weekend. And as soon as those calories start to deplete, your stomach hunger starts to signal to the brain that you're hungry. And so when you go down to 1,500 calories, and that might be what you need to burn the weight off, and it might not be starvation mode, but because it's, there's a significant difference between the two, your stomach and brain are being connected and saying, hey, I'm hungry. And so by Tuesday, you're like, oh, I'm starving, I'm lightheaded, I need food, but you really don't. Because if we've got the body fat to keep you alive, I call it the second fridge, then you've got enough calories sitting in your body to make you survive. If you think about our ancestors where we used to roam the planet to get our food, there would be times where we feast, 
and there would be times where we famine. And some people probably didn't eat for two to three days at a time. Did they live? Yes. Could they live like that for long? Probably not. But eventually us, we get fed. And right now, with all the statistics out there, I think that we're eating too much. And so our blood sugars are dropped, our stomach tank starts to shrink, we're eating 1,500 calories and we think, coach, it's not enough. I'm gonna tell you, it probably is. Number four, if you can mentally power through it and know now that your stomach tank has shrunk and knowing that you have that second fridge sitting over top of your pants, meaning the belly hanging over top of the pants, you know, you know what I'm talking, I'm not gonna go there. But that's your second fridge. So if you can stick through the mental warfare of thinking that you're starving, being on a diet, and that you might get headaches and this and that, if you can stay consistent for 10 days and let your body fat support the energy needs that your body is requiring of you, then eventually your body will adapt. I see this a lot in the belly burn. Week one, people are usually hungry. If they've never done a belly burn challenge with me and I put them on a 1800 calorie uh, a day plan and they're probably burning about 22, 2300 calories, they feel like it's the end of the world. But by the third week, these guys are eating like 12 to 1500 and they're like, I'm full, I can't eat it all coach. Trust me, give it time, you're gonna see the results. And finally, the fifth way that you can know if you're eating enough calories to burn fat is that if you are low energy, you cannot function or focus, and you've given your body and brain enough time to adapt to the lower amounts of calories, then yes, you are probably eating too low calories. Now, I'm not telling you to eat so low that you can't get out of bed, but find that minimum amount of calories that you can live off so that we can start to eat to lose the fat, and we're gonna get this right once and for all. Now, if you have no clue what I'm talking about and you need more guidance and you're a current member or not a member, go to our website, fitclub.fit, send us a message and we'll have a conversation about the belly burn today.